Welcome to this presentation on the hypothesis testing for small samples. Like the other problem, go to page 392, question 38, and we will be looking at a, a hypothesis test for a small sample. Now, note, even though it says this is that this has 30, 34 entries right here, I have deleted 14 so that only 20 of them are taken. So let's go ahead and read the problem. An Alabama politician claims that the mean annual salary for engineering, ma engineering managers in Alabama is more than the national mean $100,800. The annual salaries for a random sample of 34 engineering managers in Alabama are listed. At alpha equals 0.03 or 3% significance level, is there enough evidence to support the politician's claim? Now, we first need to identify our ho and our ha. And the way we do that is to look at the conventions we use for answering these types of questions. So let's go to page 372 and at the table it says if the claim is a ha, we would use the wording there is enough evidence to support the claim or there is not enough evidence to support the claim. So for this situation, the claim would be the alternate hypothesis as it wants an answer in the form is there enough evidence to support the claim or is there not enough evidence to support the claim so let's identify our ho and our ha mathematically and uh, verbally and that is done conveniently with this table right here and we'll do is we'll look at our ha first since that is our claim try to write the claim first because it's easier to write that than it is to write the other first so since our claim is the ha, we're going to write the mean annual salary for all Alabama engineering managers is greater, gr apparently greater than $100,800. So that means that the other would be the complement. The mean annual salary for all Alabama engineering managers is less than or equal to $100,800. So mathematically, it would, be, it would be mu is less than or equal to $100,800 for the null hypothesis and mu is greater than $100,800 for the alternative hypothesis. So once we have our ho and our ha down, what we do is we identify the level of significance and the type of test. Since the level of significance is 0 0.03, that's, well, that's the, then that would be the level of significance from the problem. And notice that we will be doing a right tail test as the ha has a greater than symbol. And since ha has the greater than symbol for the mean, we want to see the right tail. You can see that clearly in this diagram over here. If a value is greater than, it's on the right tail. So we'll go to our next step in uh, hypothesis testing. We'll determine the standardized sampling distribution. So since our sample is actually, let's go ahead and fix this right here. Since we only have 20 in our sample, it's going to be a uh, t distribution. Since n is indeed less than 30. Now, we will be calculating a t statistic and we'll be finding a p value for it. Go ahead and delete these right here, get a fresh slate. And in order to find the t statistic and its probability value is to go to GeoGebra. So go to GeoGebra here. It will bring you to the distribution tab if you click on the probability tool. But click on the statistics tab. Go to, go to t test of a mean. And let's type in our null hypothesis is our statement of equality, of course, is going to be 1,800. And our alternate hypothesis is that the mu is greater than it. Our mean, our sample mean is $92,995.40. And notice that these values right here, this is the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. This is from those 20 salaries that was given, even though I deleted 14 of them. So that's what you would do if you were doing this problem by yourself. You'd type it in a spreadsheet as so, and then you'd give the necessary functions to find the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Now, since our, standard, since our sample size is less than 20, 
we can't assume that the standard deviation of the sample is approximately close to the population. So it follows a t distribution if it is less than 30 and our uh, population is normally distributed. Notice that too. We are assuming that the sample salaries is normally distributed with one common cost. And that is realistic. There's usually one salary most of them make and the others make others the others make salaries that should be around it. So that's the big, big thing we're assuming here. We're assuming that the population of salaries is normally distributed. And our sample size, back to this right here, typing our information, just wanted to give you that quick little blurb. This is the t-test statistic, and this is the probability value here. So notice that, let's type in our test statistic. It's about negative 1.9. And our p-value is about 0 0.8. We have our p-value, which is greater than our level of significance alpha. Since our p-value is, is greater than our level of significance alu, level of significance alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We will fail to reject the null hypothesis. And if you go back to page 372, if you go to the decision row, fail to reject the null hypothesis, and our claim is the ha, we say there is not enough evidence to support the claim. And we, have, we do not have enough evidence to support the claim that the mean annual salary for all Alabama engineering managers is greater than $100,800. So this is what we'd say. Not enough evidence to support the claim that the mean... Oops, the mean annual salary for all Alabama engineering managers is greater than $100,800. And this is how we would word it when we would return our answer. Nope, not enough evidence to support the claim. It's always good after problems like this to go back and really look at our answer to see if it makes sense. So we're saying there's not enough evidence to support given that um, the claim that it's greater than $100,000. <clears> Let's think about it. Let's say <clears throat> it was greater than $100,800 and the politician was correct. Then how likely really is it that we get something so low, $93,000? So it's always good to go back and think like that for your sample mean and compare it to your claim. Is it really that likely, especially given this standard deviation and a standard error that is specific to the type of T distribution given the sample size? So just with your intu intuition, you can say that our claim is, uh, or our response is very appropriate for the situation. All right, hope this helped. See you in the next one.